Hey guys, welcome back to the Unity course. We are going to turn to our game right now and just try to modify some of the setting we put earlier on. So I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna head over back to my uh, game scene and actually have a look at my snake script. What I first wanted to change here is the fact that my grid is a little bit too small. I don't know if you can tell. We have a 10 by 10. Um, we have all the screen space over here that is just just not being filled. We also have like this weird horizon line which I'm going to get rid of. So we're just going to try and just make this look a little bit better. Um, we could even double the size of that I guess. So let's go ahead and just go ahead and do that. I will go to the very top here. Change my grid size. Simply by doing that, changing my grid size from 20, uh, from 10 to 20. And then when I hit play, my walls are still going to be there but we might be able to actually go a little bit further. And that's really all we need in that case. However, we do get the is loss here, so that means our snake did go out of bounds. The number here are no longer valid. So we need to change those number. What we could do in that case is uh, we can go ahead and just say something like grid get length and actually dynamically get the length of our grid. So that's the one in X. So grid get length X. That's going to give you 10. We want to check is the snake bigger or equal to 10 in this case and then for the y-axis we'll do the same but we'll be using get length 1 just like this so now we modified this piece of code here so it's dynamically adjusting to um, the length of our arrays so this should be covered let's go see if we have another bug so let's just hit play oh sorry that doesn't make any sense um, the smaller part just stays the same it's just a bigger part uh, we always check are we smaller than zero because no matter what the length of the array is there is no minus one, there is no minus two, there is no minus three in an array it's always zero base. So sorry about that. Um, let's go back and actually test this out. And now do we get a bug? Can we actually go beyond the wall? And it seems like we can because an apple just found over there so definitely there's something we can do here. Um, do we still die? Let's go check it out and it says we lost. So assume that we still die. Now we might want to be modifying this because 20 might have been going a little bit too far. Let's go with something like 15 and see if we still have the same problem. Now let's uh, carefully check where exactly we die. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is, should, this is exactly where we should die. So we're going to be expanding our wall to actually cover uh, that area as well now. So let's move it here. If we look at the position right now while the game is playing, it is 15. So I grab this number, put it here. Now something you might have noticed is that we get a shift towards the right, but we don't necessarily get a shift towards the left. In fact, we might have even broken our left, as you can tell. Um, and that is because of the new call I did. I actually added minus equal. It should just be smaller than zero. Sorry about that, my bad. So like this, smaller than zero. But now, um, yeah, like I mentioned, we don't get anything uh, going towards the left. We don't get any expansion towards the left. We only get it towards the right. So at this point, what I'll be doing is I'll be shifting my camera towards uh, the center of this. So let's go take our camera and I'm just going to be moving this, I think, to 7.5, I believe. 7.5 looks great for now. Uh, we also want to be scaling up our walls, of course. So our top wall here, I might want to be scaling it up to 15. Move it back to where it should be right about here. I'm going to snap on pixel using V and also scale this up as well. So we end up with something like that in the end. Uh, might as well scale that up as well. And here we go. We just did our modification. So that's our new game grid right here and it's a little bit bigger. Now uh, the camera is not not really centered. Let's actually look for another place so maybe seven would be more center seven seems fine so I'll be putting it on seven here um actually a snake is not really being played in 3d right now right now we have a nice perspective we have a nice 3d view of the actual snake game and we can put some depth in it right you can actually add some 3d object uh, add perspective basically but in the real game of snake well the usual the original one um, this would be an orthographic. Now just have a look right here, you don't have to do that if you don't want to, but under the main camera there is a projection field that you can modify and put on orthographic, which is going to give you a square box instead. So it's going to be rendering everything like in 2D, kind of. 
it's not really 2D, but it's 2D at the same time. It's just, it has no perspective, basically. Um, so you can do that if you want, modify the scale of it, uh, and just play around with that. That would give you a real 2D snake game. And as you can tell, we don't see those shadow, we don't see anything else. It's just like the normal 2D snake game. Um, for my case, I like to just change things up a little bit. I'll be under perspective and I'll just keep a perspective. The next thing that really annoys me in this case is the horizon line. Uh, Unity is always going to give you a default skybox and for some reason I really do not like those colors so what I tend to do is just go under window, lighting and just make sure that the skybox is actually turned off. I don't want to have a skybox, I don't like skybox at all. And then we end up with something that is a little bit more uh, blend looking, I like it better actually. Um, but there, there is one more problem we have here and it's really just the lighting at this point. Um, the lighting, you can modify it with a directional light, of course you can roll it around, you can just play with it. Uh, but in my case, what I'd like to do is I'd actually like to be pointing my light directly towards the grid. So let me just take the directional light, put everything on zero, so right now it's pointing directly towards the grid and we end up with something like this. Which I like better, but we're also going to be adding an additional source of light. Um, if you have a look on the right right here, the only thing that light is, is a component. The only thing that makes up a light in Unity is just the fact that it is, it is a component. So what I'm going to do is go in my snake and actually add a light component to my snake. Now there are multiple type of lights, um, I think we saw that in the past. There is the point light, which is just an area somewhere that has light. Just say like a bonfire in your game. And it's going to light up things only around the bonfire. There is also the directional light, the one that is just like a sun and it's going to point, like it's going to light up everything in a certain angle. There is a spotlight, which is just what you, you think it sounds like, and also a baked light, uh, an airy light. In this case, we're going to be using, I want to be using only the actual point light. So let's just assume that the snake would be some kind of bonfire and then you can give it a color, so say it only affects the red. Um, bump up the intensity and as you can tell you can start to feel something here uh, might be a little bit too much you can bump up the range and if we just play this now you're gonna see it's a little bit different so my snake is actually carrying around him some kind of light and that could be a cool mechanic that could be something nice it's really up to you at this point you just have fun with whatever you're trying to make I might change this color for green since it makes it a little bit more sense in my head the snake is would be green and uh, you just play around the settings so that's something I wanted to add to the little game really quickly the next thing I'd like to do is actually maybe um, add to my menu scene a bit because my menu scene is really really bland maybe add some kind of image just like you know just some kind of splash screen and then we can go and try to just build this push that to a device play this in full screen mode and all that kind of stuff so Let's quickly go back inside of our menu scene. I'm just like at the polishing phase right now where I'm just adding like a little bit, little bit of details before we can actually push that through. Uh, the first thing I'll do is get rid of that horizon line. So go under window, lighting, put that on none. Now obviously I am in the menu scene. I've quickly changed the scene by double clicking on it. And we are going to just maybe add another image. Right click, image, and then I'll center this, but I'll give it an offset, say of 150, and maybe it's going to take 700 pixel long and 150 in height. Right here would be some kind of splash screens. So if you were to go to Photoshop really quickly, like get the right dimension, you can quickly make a splash, so snake, and uh, white on white doesn't really show. <laughs> so let me just fix that really quick. But that's really it, to be honest. That's just, you have to be playing around with those things. Now, um, I'm not the best at making stuff in Photoshop, so I'll just give it some random color like that. And uh, it's really awful looking. <laughs> but you get the whole point. So you basically, you create your own image. You can save it under as a PNG. Import it, just like, um, just like we've imported stuff, I think, in the second episode. So if I just head over to my desktop really quickly, drag and drop this in here we now end up having like an image, you can put it under artwork and this image needs to be under Sprite 2D and UI because we're going to be using it as a UI piece. 
I can change my image by clicking here. So I'm on my, uh, my splash screen right here. I'm going to name splash and I can change the image by clicking here and then finding my snake. And then you end up with having some kind of game like that, which is a super simple game. It's like it's not something uh, super detailed, polished, doesn't have like real models or real texture, but still it can be quite a good learning experience. This is where I'm going to enter this episode. I hope you guys enjoy. I hope you liked. And if you did, please just leave me a like on the video. Please uh, check out the Facebook page, the Patreon page, all that kind of stuff. It's going to be in the link below the video and I will see you guys in the next one. Cheers.